Welcome back to the channel. This is Simon Cromer. It is 5 a.m. and I am headed over to the East Coast to work with Brett and Eddie from Unlimited Marine. We're going to be doing some ceramic coating, some non-skid preparation. Let's go. Welcome back and today we are working on a 2020 39 CB. I am joining Unlimited Marine for the day with Brett and Eddie and basically they are knocking this boat out in sections and today we're focused on the gunnels. We're going to do the outside, the insides and then the non-skid. So it's going to be a fun video guys. You're going to want to stay tuned. Let's get right to it. I have made a similar video to this in the past and I'm going to throw that up on the screen if you want to check that out. That is buffing spray on non-skid, so it's the flat, smoother kind. Today we're working on diamond factory non-skid, it has more grooves, and we're actually going to be doing the same process. So we have a purple foamed wool pad with the flex, this allows for the best cut, with the machine, and with the pad choice. And we're going to be just taking off the slight oxidation. This is a 2020, it just got a slight dullness to it, so we're going to take that out with Stark Elevate. This is a great combination. You're gonna get a lot of work time. You're gonna get a good finish with Stark Elevate. This is really the only polish that I can recommend for non-skid. I would definitely not use Minzerna 400 or any other sort of dry compound. You need something that is lubricated that can spread around and can get a lot and cover a lot of ground. So this is that process. I wanna cover this today for you guys because those of you doing high-end detailing, offering high-end services, you might run into doing non-skid like this. This is the proper way to prep it. If you're going to do a ceramic coating, a polymer, this is the way that you should be prepping your non-skid. Now, if your non-skid is super oxidized, which can happen and does happen, you will have to take a rotary buffer, a white wool pad, and you'll want to do a heavy cut, so Stark Level R, and you'll want to turn that pad sideways. So you're not going to use the pad normally. You're not going to use it horizontally. You're going to turn it vertical. And you're going to get inside all the grooves of the non-skid. That is the only way that you can do this for this type of non-skid. So that would be the two-step process if you have to cover something like that. And like I said, there are times where you're going to work on an older boat where it does need to have that process. So that's just something to keep in mind. I will cover a little bit more about all this as we continue and work through the video because I think it's very important that we cover this for those of you detailers or even boat owners that just simply want to take really good care of your boat and do everything the right way. I don't believe in just coating the non-skid without doing any prep. I do not believe in that whatsoever. I don't think you're creating the best bond when you don't have a shiny, clean, oxidative, free surface. always do a good wipe down with and in this case it doesn't have to be a high quality microfiber just any microfiber um honestly one i would prefer that you don't use a plush one and just use an older one one that is a little more aggressive and then you can get inside all the grooves and take all the polishes out so give a good wipe down and we're going to continue i think on this machine i usually run this at about four or five on the flex which is towards the higher end i believe six is the max so you're looking at between four and five. You do want it to spin relatively fast to break down the polish and get into all the cracks. So we're just gonna move. In this process, you really wanna kinda go with the non-skid. So 
versus where you're gonna be doing smooth, where you go side to side, right? You go vertical and horizontal. You actually wanna go vertical and horizontal with the non-skid, but you wanna go with the groove. So you wanna go with the groove. So it's almost like a diagonal side to side and vertical, if that makes sense. You wanna go with the grain of the non-skid so you can cut and get inside all these cracks. So now it's not gonna be perfect. You're not gonna get inside of every single crack with this pad, but this takes off pretty much the entire top layer and a little bit of the insides. And this does leave the perfect finish for doing what we're doing today, which is a ceramic coating. So I've been doing this process for almost two years now and it works amazing. So as long as you got the right products to use to protect the non-skid, this is gonna create the best bond. I'm just gonna run through a full comprehensive list of things to keep in mind while you're working on your non-skid because this is a fairly straightforward process. I've already tapped into most of the things that you need to be aware of, but I do wanna go back real quick to oxidized non-skid because I've had a lot of experiences with this. And if you're working on like, for example, a 1990s, a boat or something that hasn't been buffed in 20 years, a non-skid's never been touched or protected, this can get really out of hand and you're gonna run into some problems. That is actually where I would use something like 3M Heavy. So 3M Heavy, I would run with the white wool pad and I'd really cut into the non-skid really good because you can't just sand the non-skid. That's the only issue with oxidized non-skids. You can't sand it. So you have to get extremely aggressive on the compounds. And look, it's sometimes it's just not gonna be perfect, but you can get most of it out. So usually if something is really bad like that, if I'm working on an older boat, I'll do a three-step process. I'll run 3M heavy with the white wool, level R with the white wool, because that is a diminishing abrasive actual compound, whereas 3M heavy is a non-abrasive, so it's not gonna break down. It's like, it's basically liquid sandpaper, so it's the best way to actually get into those grooves on a super oxidized boat and get it the best that you can. Sometimes non-skid turns yellow. All these things factor into oxidation, right? If your non-skid's yellow, it is oxidized and you can do the best that you can to bring it back. But really, I don't go any further than that three-step process because at that point, it's really not worth it to the client and sometimes you're not gonna be able to bring it back to perfection, but we always do try. So 3M Heavy would be the first step. Second step, Stark Level R use that diminishing abrasive to get it closer to a polished finish. And then you're gonna wanna run this purple foamed wool pad to finish off your third step to create the polished look and prep for whatever you're gonna put on here. Like I said, you can do a polymer, you can throw Jeskar Power Lock, Jeskar Ultra Lock, Stark Hyper Hold, you can put any ceramic coating that you want on your non-skid, you're gonna be all right. I would stick to something like, for example, non-skid is going to get slick when it's coated with an SiO2 polymer or anything that has silicas and things like that in it. But however, the ceramic coating, also very slick, but if you're wearing shoes on the boat, it's not gonna be too much of an issue. And if the non-skid is not wet, you're gonna be fine. So just mention that to the owner. Probably wanna be careful if you're gonna walk barefoot on your boat while it's wet. If you're wearing shoes, you're fine. If the boat's dry, you're gonna be fine but sometimes non-skid can get slick, but I always prefer and recommend the protection because it just saves the boat so much in my opinion. Like I'm always gonna pick the protection over, you know, me not being smart or the owner, you know, choosing not to be smart about wearing shoes on their boat and things like that. So it all comes down to safety and just making sure that you're aware of what you're doing and you're gonna be safe. Aside from doing the full restoration on your non-skid, we're gonna talk a little bit more about what we're doing exactly today. So just a rundown list. We have our Flex or our Rupes Millie. This is gonna be the best two machines for doing this process. I always like the Flex. I don't know why, I just prefer the Flex. It's easier to handle for me. It is so powerful and it works great with the foam bowl, but you can use the Rupes Millie. You want a forced action polisher for this purpose. You cannot use a rotary. You cannot use a DA, not gonna work, doesn't have the power. Want to use Elevate? I really don't have another polish to recommend to you, so hopefully you can get your hands on Elevate 
Otherwise you need something that's lubricated, something that's gonna break down really good. Don't use Minzerna 400, not the go-to on this exact thing that we're doing today, which is the non-skid. So after that, like I said, run the machine four or five on the flex. On the milli, I'm trying to think what the milli has. I think it's pretty similar. I think you can run it four or five on the milli because you wanna make sure that you're breaking down the polish. It needs a lot of heat, it needs a lot of rotation. So you're just gonna run through that process, working grooves with the non-skid, right? You wanna go with the grain to help get the polish inside all the cracks and crevices. And then you're gonna to wanna to wipe off with the microfiber and that is exactly how you do it. So it's pretty straightforward. Hope this helped. Let's jump to ceramic coating. with a private ceramic coating today so we're going to talk about just things in general about ceramic coatings things i've learned things i've picked up on since i started coating boats i've learned a lot of things from a lot of different people people who've been coating for years upon years and i just want to talk a little bit more about how we can get better time out of our coatings what to do properly this is an important process it's something to take seriously the prep is something to consider seriously and this all comes down to how long the product's going to last how long the bond is gonna last. Some of these coatings, these bonds last so long that the oxidation comes underneath the coating and then you're struggling to buff off the coating to redo an application. So all this is gonna be talked about today. Um, I hope you guys stuck around to this part because you're gonna get a lot of information, a lot of knowledge that I've learned and tips and tricks about ceramic coating. So let's get to it and let's explain what we're doing. Here is coating the non-skid so non-skid we leave on the non-skid so we don't level we don't wipe off ceramic coating on the non-skid this is how we're gonna get the longest amount of time out of our non-skid so in this case you do want a really strong bond you want a full effect you want it thick you want to keep as much ceramic coating on the non-skid because this is a tough area it gets a beating it gets a lot of walking a lot of traction maybe not up here on the gunnel but it does get a lot of sun just as the gunnel in general does. So we will be doing just a one coat, leave on, don't level ceramic coating on the non-skid. So always remember and keep that in mind. That's pretty much, pretty much a standard in the industry. I feel like most people do that and they know of that, but that is definitely the way to do it. The stronger the coating you have, that's the best one that you wanna put on your non-skid. So if you're working with Stark, you're gonna to wanna to use Repel Pro. You need to use the strongest coating that you have on the non-skid. So Liquid Thor here is not the move for the non-skid. Don't be putting Liquid Thor on your non-skid. It's not gonna hold up very well. So Repel Pro in that situation, right? IGL, G-Technic, those are all fine. Um, now you do have your one-step systems. IGL, you do have your two-step systems, G-Technic. These get complicated because with G-Technic, then you have to do the two-step, the base and the top because those go together. I prefer the one single coating and then layering that on top. So I would actually prefer IGL over G-Technic. Um, Stark, yes, I would probably prefer Stark over G-Technic just for the ease of application and the way that you can double coat where you want to, single coat where you want to. You don't have to worry about a base and a top. Sometimes these get confusing now i'm just not making a claim because i don't know for sure but i feel like the single coatings do last better i think just the way they're made up and the way they're formulated it lasts better with instead of doing a base and top because it all comes down to the timing of the base and top to get them to bond together and stay on the boat i prefer a single coating at the end of the day I picked up a cool trick from someone who has been doing coatings for a long time and kind of testing this theory and idea. 
And instead of actually just going across a gel coat, right? If you've seen in my past videos or just anyone who really talks about coatings, they just go side to side, up and down. They just cover the gel coat, right? Here, we're actually gonna push the coating into the gel coat. So we're not gonna get all, you know, straightforward and super fancy and we're not gonna be super strategic about how we're doing the coating like maybe you saw in the past, one of the videos. We're actually pushing the gel coat. We're really moving it into the pores and getting that ceramic coating into the pores so we're not just hardly touching the surface, right? So that's a little bit of a change that we're experimenting with, um, actually moving the applicator, pushing it into the gel coat, and we're gonna see if that will help us last a little longer. So we don't have to be perfect here. We don't have to go slow and fancy and hardly touch the surface. That's actually not a good thing to do. So that's not a good thing to do. The better thing you can do is do short motions and push that coating into the gel coat. So doing the non-skid here, and this is just a great view for you guys to see. On the non-skid, we're just going in every direction, getting it into all the pores, and then we're just gonna let it sit and dry as I talked about and mentioned previously. Before I wrap up this video, I just want to talk about brands really quick and oh, also the applicator will be in the link below. I believe it's Autofiber and we're doing our two step wipe off process. Single microfiber plush, second microfiber plush, make sure we get all the coating off the boat except the non-skid, we're going to keep that on. Um, and then this coating is really interesting to work with, right? We can put it on, take it off right away do a second coat a minute, two minutes later, no problem. So I just want to talk about brands really quickly. Number one, you know that I use Stark a lot and I have a three detail system. So if you look at my website, if you follow me, I have a polymer, it's an entry level detail. It's a high end polymer. You're not gonna get a very low level out of that service. It's still gonna be great. Then you have our ceramic, our mid ceramic, which is something I would use Stark for. And then we're looking for a better ceramic for our 1% detail. So I need a better ceramic that can last two to three years. These coatings are out here. We are working with some of these coatings now. We are experimenting with these coatings now because it all comes down to solids, carrying agents, and some of these more friendly, right? Like Stark, Underdog, maybe G-Technic a little bit, but not as much, and IGL is a little bit more professional. It all comes down to the carrying agents because if you have anybody buying these coatings, right? Like Stark, Underdog, you have to have a little bit of workability and friendly for the client because otherwise they're not gonna be able to wipe off the coating. If they forget and they don't wipe off the coating for a minute or two, then they're gonna be screwed. That coating's on there, they can't get it off. It's gonna be a pain to buff off because that bond is gonna be so strong. So you gotta understand all these factors that go into this about the ceramic coatings. I hope this is all kind of making sense. I'm just kind of talking about what I'm gonna be doing moving forward. Me, Unlimited Marine, so Top Back Pro, Unlimited Marine over on the East Coast, we're both trying to find that better coating for our clients. So we are working with some of these coatings now, so that is the good news. Still gonna be using Stark. I love Stark Prep, right? I love the Level R, I love Elevate. Never gonna get rid of that for what I can see in the near future. Haven't found anything close to giving me those results. But on the coating levels, we are trying to upgrade, get our 1% detail, which is our package in Top Deck Pro for coating everything on the boat. So we're looking for better coating for that because we've got to get two to three years out of these coatings if we're going to be charging and doing these high-end type of services. So with that said, guys, I just wanted to mention what's going on. We had a great day working with Unlimited Marine. Super fun, super excited to get out here, training with new ceramics, doing a lot of training, working with different brands, companies lately. And we're just excited to offer different things, better things here in the future in the harsh state of Florida. Not in terms of harsh as in the living environment, but on the boat scene, it's harsh. You got the salt water, the sun. And with that said, guys, check out the after footage. If you like the video, leave a like, drop a comment. Be sure to share this video with other people because the more people we reach, the more people we can help in the boating industry, whether you're a boat owner, boat detailer. If you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button now, and I will see you on the next video. Peace out.